Welcome to OnStar. What would you like to do? I've been the voice of the car for, gosh, I have no idea how long, since its inception. Okay. I was the first voice of OnStar and continue to do that work um, to this very day, guiding millions of people all across uh, North America, the United States and Canada, telling them where to go. So when you're looking for a voice, the voice that you want is somebody that you can trust, somebody that you can count on, in the case of OnStar, to take you where you want to go. And that, I think, implies a certain amount of, a certain amount of intelligence, a certain amount of warmth, a certain amount of authority, but not too much. I like to think of myself as sitting alongside the driver as their partner rather than someone who's bossing them around. You know, people have felt as though there was a presence, a persona with them, and that's, that's what I created. It's not Mary McDonald Lewis in the car, it's OnStar in the car. Humans want humans in their, in their interaction. They I always will. Could you know, Josh, I've been wildly fortunate as a voice actor. I moved to Hollywood as a youngster in my mid-twenties, and I set out to be a voice actor. I didn't want to be an on-camera actor. I uh, enjoyed theater work, but it wasn't going to be my, my, my primary um, living, my primary profession. My, the tug of my heart led me to voice acting, and I was fortunate enough to become uh, cast in uh, some very famous cartoon shows that live on in the hearts and minds <laughs> of fans today. I still get fan mail and people asking me to uh, sign headshots. I'm still invited to Comic-Cons which is a great deal of fun. You know, the wonderful thing about voice work, Josh, and um, uh, your viewers are getting a rare glimpse of a face to put to a voice. But the magic of the voice is that people get to imagine anything they want. Gosh, this goes back now to the early mid-90s when speech recognition was being worked on by the nation's, possibly the world's, leading linguists in the field of communication. Uh, the work came out of Stanford. I worked with the professors Byron Reeves and Cliff Nass. And together, alongside them, we developed the platforms that are today used in cars, on telephone systems, banking systems, maybe one day even in a smart home or two. As the longest working speech recognition voice in, in the world, of course, I just, my artistic side just starts to drool at the, at, at the <laughs> ideas that, uh, uh, that what this home could be and how welcoming the home could be because you've already got, um, with the connectivity and with the level of um, sophistication of these systems, it's already an environment where a person living in a home like this feels as though they have all the information they need. They're not going to lose that information. It's sleek, it's elegant, it's ergonomic. So you have all of the pieces in place, except for that very last piece, which is the voice that says, hi, Josh. Welcome mm -hmm. home. How was your day? Yes. Well, and I think as technology moves forward, Josh, we, we have to be mindful that uh, in spite of all of the ways that we can make life easier uh, and, and solve problems, that it's sort of a two-pronged technological goal, make life easier, and solve the problems of living on the planet Earth, we can't lose the human connection um, uh, as, we, as we do that. Uh, it doesn't profit us to gain the world, technologically speaking, if we lose the human soul. And the voice, to me, even more than the eyes, is the window to the soul.